Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to show you how to replace a battery in a modern automobile. Now what do I mean by that? Well, about the year 2011 or so, maybe 2013, automakers started making cars that needed constant voltage to the computer in order to not have to reset it if you lose battery. Why did they do this? Well, so you'll take it to the dealer and hopefully give them a bunch of money to do a otherwise very easy thing to do. Now this video is going to apply to cars that have a bunch of computers in them. We happen to be using a 2018 Mercedes-Benz GLA 250, uh, a fairly high-end automobile, so it's got fairly high-end computers and therefore it is pretty darn difficult to work on and Mercedes-Benz has made absolutely sure of that. So where is like the cutoff? I don't have any definitive proof for this and you might have to look this up per automobile, but if you have a car that was made after 2013, you're most likely going to have to do this. And if you have an electric car, you're definitely going to have to do this. And yes, electric cars, even Teslas, have a regular 12 volt plain Jane car battery in them. In addition to the regular batteries that, you know, run the car, there is a 12 volt regular battery in there. So if you have like a 2009 and up um, German vehicle, I would say you have to do this. And if you have like a domestic vehicle, probably like 2013 or so is where I would uh, guess that would be. Now, if you're in doubt, just go ahead and do it this way because even if you have an older vehicle, doing it this way doesn't harm it or anything. It, it's completely fine. But if you have an older vehicle, like I have an 05 F-150, you don't need to do it. The computer's too basic and it won't know that it's been unplugged. With these newer vehicles, uh, once you disconnect the negative terminal uh, and you don't have any voltage going to the computer, the computer kind of goes, uh-oh, I've been unplugged something's wrong and it might require the computer to be reflashed or taken to the dealer and done some computer trickery it's just another ploy to get you to spend money but i have a perfect workaround and it works great especially on these modern cars so with all that out of the way let's go ahead and jump in so the first thing we need to do is remove this hood release cable out of our tray it pulls out just like that pretty easy and then and then we can just pull back like this on the cover and it comes right off then we can remove this cover that covers the positive terminal. There we go. So now we can start worrying about how we're gonna get this battery out of here and stop right now. Don't go any further because there is a really important thing about these modern cars. With today's modern cars, they have computers inside of them that need power at all times. If they lose power, they can actually act really strangely. They might need to be reflashed or reprogrammed. It's a giant headache. So how do we get around that? It's really easy. All we need to do is provide the car with 12 volts at all time using one of these jump box. There is a link down below in the description to something similar to this. Our car, as you'll see in a minute, has some pretty convenient uh, power and ground spots that we're going to show you, but if your car didn't have those, what do you do? Well, you can use some of these little tiny alligator clip wires, link down below in the description, and hook positive to positive and negative to negative on one of the terminals, not the battery post, but one of the terminals uh, for positive and negative respectively. And uh, you know that will keep the computer alive. That'll keep those 12 volts flowing. But if you do use these, or if you use the jumper in my opinion, do not try to start the car because especially with these little guys, uh, it'll just fry these immediately and then you'll have some really big computer problems on your hands. So don't do anything electrical with the car while you're keeping it alive with one of these jump boxes. So here's the device that is going to save our bacon here on changing our battery ourselves on a modern vehicle. Now, this is a jump pack. You could use this to jump start your car if it has gone flat in a parking lot or something like that but we're not going to be using its ability to jump start a vehicle today we're just going to be using its low power output so you can see our 12 volt low amperage circuit coming out of the bottom of our power pack here into a cigarette lighter or sometimes it's called an auxiliary power port and we can plug this in and turn the device on and it will supply power to our computer that is one way you can keep the computer alive while you're swapping the battery so here is a cigarette lighter or auxiliary power port on our mercedes benz here from 2018 so we can go ahead and remove the cover look it's not even a cigarette lighter it's just a, like a dummy like a dust like a dust cap interesting and then we can plug in our power supply. Very good. And then we're gonna turn it on. 
There we go. So it is now supplying uh, 12 volts to the computer and you can safely unplug your battery. So what you could do instead of using the cigarette lighter is you could apply a alligator clip to somewhere here like on the positive terminal just there, very cool. And then you'd put a negative alligator clip on the negative, like this piece of metal my finger's kind of touching. But on this particular car, it's kind of tight and a little difficult to get to. Luckily, the manufacturer knew that and gave us some additional provisions. So just to the right of our battery, the, it might be in a different location for you. You can consult your owner's manual if you have one of these. Um, the manufacturer puts this in. This is basically so you could jumpstart your car more easily if you were in a parking lot or something. So here is your positive location and here is your negative. So we're gonna be using that very, very easy. So now we can remove our battery hold down. Every single car is going to have some way the battery is affixed to the car. Ours exactly. happens to be using a 13 millimeter bolt, so I have the associated socket and we can go ahead and remove that. We move our hold down piece and set that aside. So now we can hook up our jump pack. Uh, I have uh, spliced in some alligator clips to make it a little easier for me. The orange in my left hand is positive, so we can go ahead and hook that to positive. And then black in my right hand is negative. We can hook that to our ground here. There we go. And uh, now our computer is gonna be supplied with that 12 volts when we turn on our jump box so we can remove our battery. Now we can turn our jump box on by holding the power button. Letting off, there we go. Now the car is supplied with voltage. So now we're ready to remove our battery terminals and you always start with the negative first and we're going to, when we take it off, we're gonna set it down in a way or over in a way in that it won't accidentally touch while we're working. That could be very bad. Also never ever touch your positive and negative battery terminals with anything. Uh, you want those completely independent because like let's say you, you touch them with like a wrench or something, it'll spark, it'll heat up, you have a chance of blowing the battery up. It's just all around bad, do not do it. So we can grab a 10 millimeter socket in our case, yours might be different, and we can remove our negative. Oh, this was on there. All right, we can store that away, just over. As long as it, we know it's not gonna touch, you can even zip tie it, so that way it doesn't accidentally flick over. And then we can uh, go ahead and remove our positive exactly the same way, 10 millimeter. And set that down just like that. Perfect. And then we can carefully remove our battery. We also disconnected this vent. It was just a clear uh, tube. You can just pull that right off. Just remember to put that back on if your new battery has that, which it should. Pull it straight up and out, and there we go. All right, so here is our used unit on our right side of the screen and our new unit on the left. Just make sure you're getting a comparable battery as far as cold cranking amps and group size goes. Uh, the guy at the battery store can help you out with that. And then the main thing you wanna check is orientation of where the terminals are. So you can see that both of our positives are over here and both of our negatives are over here on the battery. So there's no way to hook it up incorrectly once we put it into the car in the correct orientation. Also, I noticed on this battery that it has a plug over here on the negative side and an elbow on the positive side. So we need to transfer that hardware over to our new battery. A so small standard screwdriver. You can remove this plug and then that'll go into the negative side of our new battery. Very cool. And then the elbow just pulls straight out. and we can just insert that straight in. Perfect. Now all you have to do now is remove our cap for our negative. Make sure you don't forget to do that, exposing our metal. We can remove our positive as well. You could probably do that after you've put it in the car. I like to do it at this stage, so that way I don't forget. So now it's ready to be put back in the vehicle. We can go ahead and gingerly set our battery in. Ooh, perfect. Just like that. Very cool. So then we can reattach our positive here, making sure the negative doesn't move like it just tried to. And we can set that bad boy back onto its home and tighten her down. Just snug is fine. You know, wrist tight. This doesn't need to be Hulk tight. There we go. Just make sure it can't jiggle, which this can't. That's perfect. That's perfect. And then we can grab our negative. Now on this, you want to touch 
the metal of the terminal to the metal on the battery terminal to see if there's any sparks or anything crazy happens. You want to let off immediately because a spark can potentially blow the battery up and that would obviously not be good. So we can go ahead and touch it, make sure nothing crazy happens. Which it hasn't, excellent. Put that fully down and then we can tighten up this terminal as well. Just wrist tight, perfect. And when you're done, you can double check and make sure that they don't move. That one's nice and tight. And so is this one, we're perfect. So now that the battery has been replaced, we can turn off our jumper box because its job has been completed. And then we can remove our clips or unplug our cigarette lighter. Perfect, and now we can just take this away. And our jumper box's job is completely finished. All right, and then we can replace our battery hold down. You just wanna make sure that this surface here is on the lower cleat of the battery, so that way it has something to hold on to during, uh, you know, going over speed bumps and the like. And we can just put that back on, really easy. Grab our 13 millimeter. And we can tighten that back up. Just, you know, one arm tight, snug, 13 millimeter. Perfect, make sure the battery doesn't move which this one doesn't, so it's perfect. And then we can plug our vent tube back into that red elbow, perfect. That'll let uh, gases vent out of the battery safely. And we can replace our positive terminal plastic cover here. This will prevent any accidental touches or grounding out. Just a nice safety precaution to have. And then we can replace our top battery cover. And that's gonna differ from model to model. Um, we also took this off and we removed the battery. Not technically necessary, but it was uh, necessary for filming. And then we can just put our cover back on. There we go. So that's how to replace a battery in a modern automobile. I'm trying to make this as broad and general as possible. All modern cars work exactly the same way. Again, even electric cars such as a Tesla does have that conventional 12 volt battery. It might be buried under some plastic, but you can find it and change it yourself and save hundreds of dollars, if not thousands, if we're talking about a really high-end vehicle. Now, before you turn this video off, it is really important that you reset the battery monitor. I'm gonna have a whole nother video on how to do that, and it is absolutely essential. Do not go anywhere without resetting that monitor, and you're gonna need a high-end scanner to do that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video coming up. Please like this video if you think I've earned it, and I'll see you next time.